Sir, this planet is transiting here. That planet is transiting there. This is going on. That is going on. But I don't know what will happen in my life. Have you encountered this question? Have you seen people asking these questions? Like, for example, let me give you a very quick example. Now, Saturn will transit into the sign of Pisces on 29th March next year, 2025. But what will happen to you? You may be thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I am uh, Aries, you know, moon sign, uh, or, you know, I am Taurus Lagna, so I'll watch for Taurus. Okay, maybe even for Aries moon sign, okay? But one twelfth of the world population will be from that ascendant. So does it mean, uh, no, so does it mean everybody will have the same? Well, absolutely not. Then what is the use of transits? Well, this is something you may be thinking. But you need to understand that you should not approach transits that way. Which means, it does not mean that, suppose, for you now, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Venus, Mars or Mercury, whichever planet is transiting in a particular house, you will get results pertaining to that house. No, it does not work like that period. But then how does it work? <laughs> so that's exactly what we will try to understand today. Because if you just watch generic transit videos it will uh, it will give you some feel good factor okay but there won't be any result you'll just waste your time okay so therefore today we shall understand how to actually know what transits will give us okay but before that you need to understand that transit is used at the third level what does it mean a uh, third level Third level means after seeing two things, only then you should use transits as number three. It's like the crown. Then, well, uh, what's number one? Number one is the overall chart. Okay. Now, overall chart means where are the energies flowing? So, for example, where is sun? Where is moon? Where is Lagna Lord? Where are majority planets? Like among the nine planets, four or five planets, where are they? No. Where are they placed? Which houses they are lording? Where are the nakshatra lords? What's going on in the Navamsha? What's going on in the Dashamsha? What is the strength of the horoscope for a particular area of life? Let's talk about profession. So if you're talking of profession, you will have to see these planets. Lagna lord, Lagna lord sun, then moon, then second house, sixth house, tenth house, eleventh house. These, these houses must be seen. Now, if you don't see and you directly jump into things like, you know, I have Mars in 10th house, okay? No, it does not mean anything. It means just nothing, okay? Thousands and lakhs and millions of people will have Mars in 10th. But does it mean everybody will be like an army general? No. So now, when you have seen the Lagna Lord, the, the sun, the moon, and then you see in the Artha houses, 2, 6, 10, what is going on? And 11th house shows your money, right? So then if... If you see certain patterns are repeating in those houses, then you know that the person's career will be guided in this particular direction. If not, then the person may be doing two things parallelly or the person may do something now and then later when the uh, dasha changes, the person may do something else. Okay, So, the pattern recognition has to be identified. What kind of patterns are repeating? Astrology is like you have to find what is repeating every time, okay? One planet is saying, this person will go into engineering. The other is saying, he, he or she will go into, you know, medical. The other, the, then the other planet is saying, oh, engineering. The other is again saying medical. So, four planets are gone. Then the fifth planet is saying, oh, engineering. Then the uh, sixth planet, again engineering. So, you have to collect the clues and understand what, is going on in the chart what are majority majority means more than four or five planets what are they telling for your profession so for example what is the sun telling where is sun placed and also when it comes to profession you have to check the karakas like sun mercury and saturn they are the karakas for the 10th house you could also take jupiter so what are these planets saying? So once you identify the common elements, then you know what is the strength, what is the potential in this person's chart to earn money. Once you have seen that, then the next thing you should do is go to the dashas. So the dashas will tell you 
what will be the focus of this person's life at the moment? The Mahadasha will tell that to you. And the Antardasha will tell you what will be the ups and downs in the person's profession. For any area, we are just talking of profession at the moment. But it works for any area, okay? So now, suppose... Uh, a person uh, a person is you know uh, the horoscope is saying that the person will uh, go into engineering but now in the dasha suppose this person has mercury in 10th and mercury mahadasha starts so then what happens is this person's career will take off very fast because a planet in the 10th house gives you you know name fame recognition power position authority so this person will become a manager or a you know vice president or a ceo or somebody like that or a team lead also, and then this person will take off quite fast, much faster than before, okay? But now suppose uh, the person has a planet not in the 10th, but in the 2nd or 6th, then the person will do decent or decent good, okay? But if the person has a planet in the 10th or 11th, and that Mahadasha start, the person will do exponentially better. So now you know that because the 10th and 11th houses are the most powerful houses, in the horoscope, so now this person will be able to use his or her maximum potential and rise very high in the profession. That 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 is something which is guaranteed. Okay. Now you have seen the overall chart, then you have seen the dashas. Now you use transits. So when you use transits, then you have to see, in terms of profession, you have to see. You know. Uh, planets when they are transiting good houses but primarily the slower planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu right? Jupiter around 1 year Rahu, Ketu you know 18 months Saturn 2 and a half 3 years so when these planets so suppose a person's uh, Mercury Mahadasha is there let's take a simple example person has Mercury in the 11th and Mercury Dasha starts so for 17 years the person has uh, this good time in period but now suppose for this person, the the slow moving players, Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, they are transiting somewhere in the second house or in the sixth house, in the tenth house or in the eleventh house, and the under the side at that time is also a bit supportive. Then you know these periods will give you massive boosts. Okay, otherwise not. But now suppose what is happening is uh, the person has a good chart. And the person has a good horse, uh, good dasha also. But the transits are bad. So then during those periods when the transits are negative, the person might have some confusion. But uh, or the person may be thinking, Am I, wh what I'm doing, is this right or not? You know? But it will not impact his profession. Absolutely not. Okay, Because the dasha is protecting. The dasha is like the kavach that you wear. It's like you know the kavach that you have, the protection, the shield. So that will always protect you irrespective of if our transit is good or bad. Okay, so therefore, please analyze the chart, see where is the flow of the chart and then see the dasha and then see the transit. Similarly for marriage, where, where how is Venus placed, how is Lagna or Sun, Moon placed, how is Jupiter placed for a lady because that shows the husband. For men, uh, Venus is the wife and where is the 5th Lord, ninth Lord, all these players placed. So that will inherently tell you, does this person have the capacity to get married or maintain a marriage long term for 40-50 years? Or the person will, you know, have frequent divorces or the person is a womanizer, you know, hopping like, you know, cats and dogs, okay, and monkeys from one, uh, one member of the opposite sex to the other, okay. So, that, that the horoscope will tell you. Then you see Dasha. So after the age of 25, generally, the person, suppose, gets a Dasha of the 2nd house, 7th house or 11th house. Then the person can get married. Now, in transit, when Jupiter, Saturn or Rahu Ketu or maybe, you know, Mercury, Venus, Sun, whatever. They are transiting either in the 2nd house, 5th house, 7th house, 9th house or 11th house, which generally happens because these are many houses so then you know the person might get a proposal or then the person might get married the event of wedding could be there similarly for childbirth can this uh, can this does this man have the power to uh, make a lady conceive or if this is a lady's chart 
does she have the power to conceive okay and then then you see okay uh, we when are prominent plants transiting the second house fifth house ninth house eleventh house but these four houses are houses of children and then you see okay now this can happen so one is you know can she conceive if yes when and then during the delivery nine months is there a problem or not okay so when you identify it like this, then you can actually predict when there is promotion, when there is defamation or job loss, or when the person will get married, or when the person will have child birth. So you can predict all this using these three layers, okay? And suppose you are confused, and you as an astrologer, you are not able to give an answer. 99.9% .9 of the times, if you are doing the analysis in this way, you will be able to give answer 99.9% .9 but then there are you know this 0.1% exceptions then you have to use prashna chart okay so the prashna chart will tell you okay there's a confusion if this will happen or that will not happen okay that's a separate discussion we can have it some other time but please don't do like this you know like okay uh, because I get so many people uh, like people tell me okay my Jupiter will now transit you know in this house will I get married will I get a better job well, it depends on your dashas and even before your dashas, it depends on your overall chart because no two people in this entire world will have the same horoscope, never, okay? Your D1 may be same, your D9 may be same, your D10, but then your Sastiyamsha will be different. Even if your Sastiyamsha is same, your hand, your hand which shows, you know, your things using palmistry, that will ever be the same, right? So, therefore... If you are not getting answers, please use Prashna and Pomistry also. But you will get 99.9% .9 of the answers just using Astrology. You don't need Prashna or even you may not need Pomistry for that. Okay. But again, uh, not demonizing Pomistry or Prashna. Use it. These are all brilliant tools. You know, use whatever is required. But first, always chart, dasha and transit. All right. Thank you so much for personalized consultations. My website is down below. Please take care. Jai Sia Ram.